The story is from CNBC.com. Former YouTube content moderator describes horrors of the job in new lawsuit. Now, we've heard about things like this, right? I've covered this in different forms with Facebook and, uh, and, and Instagram, how they farm out the third-party contractors the censorship job of, of processing uh, content that violates community guidelines. And, and, and with, with Facebook, it's if anything gets flagged and taken down, it goes to one of these um, anti-troll farms, I guess you could call them. And someone has to watch it. And, and I've said this I, until, you know, I'll say this until it's irrelevant. This is, this is a system that is only necessary when these social media networks want to be able to manipulate the dialogue to serve their political agendas. Let me explain. So to the story, a contractor who worked as a moderator for YouTube through 2019 alleges the company and its third-party vendors failed to support employees tasked with viewing violent content. The plaintiff, referred to as Jane Doe, said she had to view mass murders, abortions, and bestiality, among other violent videos. Her lawsuit alleges the companies didn't adhere to their own moderation standards and didn't provide necessary information prior to her starting the job. Now. Jim, do you think any of this is necessary in the first place? Um, no, no. I think uh, like you have perfectly made the point before, we should be able to see it and the market itself should be able to decide, okay, we don't want to support this channel. We do want to support that channel. By removing it, you create the Streisand effect, create people that want to watch it, you know, well, most of the time we don't have a Streisand effect. Most of the time content just gets buried. But don't you think if, if, if your neighbor, you know, posted uh, posted a video of some ISIS beheading just to, and, and your friends because you, you made an effort to connect with people on Facebook who live near you. And, uh, you know, one of your neighbors put up uh, an ISIS beheading video that that is clearly a violation of Facebook or, or YouTube's community guidelines. I mean, don't you don't you want Facebook or YouTube to hide that from you so that you're not traumatized by it? No, I don't. I would rather see it. And also what, what the person is saying about it, what their opinion is on the subject so that I can better understand who it is I'm friends with on Facebook. Oh, OK, Jim, but you're one of the enlightened ones, right? You're one who. And, and you know what? I, I can't even take that position. You know, if someone wants to show an ISIS beheading video, I, I might be interested to hear what they have to say about it. But honestly, I want Facebook or YouTube to, to hide that from me. I mean, at least uh, not to remove it from the platform, but to put a, 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 a film on it and have a click that gives you the option. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. Now, because, and, and it's not just for me, like maybe I've seen that video before, right? Right. If I've seen that particular ISIS beheading video, do I need to see it again because another person wants to put their little caption commentary on it? No, I'd rather not. And so I think what they've done here is created the worst possible system to achieve the effect that we're describing based on the demand of the market. Because what they do is, if, if it gets flagged, I mean, you see, if your neighbor sees it, right? Who's, or your neighbor posts it and their neighbor who's not you sees it first, they flag it and that flag means it gets taken down. And now a moderator has to watch it to verify that it should have been taken down. Whereas, so now, not only do you have one person who's seen it having to report it themselves and 
sent it and, and you as the other neighbor been denied of what your neighbor's thoughts are because what if your neighbor's thoughts are such that well if you're muslim and they're saying something like i want to kill all muslims and your neighbor's that kind of racist threat if you didn't know now you don't know now that threat has been hidden from you and that's a whole other scary possibility is that Facebook and YouTube and, and even to a smaller extent, Twitter and, and Instagram are hiding real threats to you in the name of censorship for other people's sensitivities. Whereas the obvious answer is if you're if your neighbor who didn't like it. So really, the, the the best the best way to deal with this is. To allow people to put their own warnings on content. And, you know, what's crazy is. On YouTube, I don't have that option. I can say that it's not suitable for kids, but I can't put a screen on top of it that says violent content warning, you know, make sure that you click to here that says, I, you know, I can't put that screen on top of my own video. All I can do is put it in the title and hope that people read that before it auto plays or they look over and see something horrific. And the only time I've really done this was with the Jordanian pilot who was burned alive by ISIS, allegedly, if you remember that video, to make the point about the restraint of Muslims, that this is the, the worst that they're capable of, and numerically the violence done by all Islamic terrorists in all human history still doesn't come close to measuring up to the violence done by the United States government on the Middle East in terms of you know, sheer death count. So... Even if I fail to do that, Jim, right? Even if your neighbor who wanted to post the beheading video wanted to, to rickroll all of his followers on Facebook and make sure that you saw it, you could just have the first person who sees it go, uh, there should be a screen on that. And then you have the right, you could dispute that screen, but if enough people watch it and, and say, yeah, the screen should be there, the screen stays. And then you don't have to do what YouTube is doing in a way that is fundamentally torturing people in order to keep this system going. And don't worry, at the end of this, I will explain why, in my original assertion, this has to do with manipulating the political dialogue. The suit filed Monday in California Superior Court in San Mateo says the plaintiff was required to watch murders, abortions, child rape, animal mutilation, and suicide. YouTube parent company Google faces increasing pressure to control content spanning violence and misinformation, particularly as it approaches the 2020 U.S. election and antitrust investigations from state attorneys general, the Department of Justice, and Congress. The plaintiff, referred to as Jane Doe, worked as a YouTube content moderator for staffing contracting firm Colabera from 2018 to 2019, her lawsuit said. Now, just again, this is happening from contracting firms because YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, even they don't want to take direct responsibility for their this this evil system that they're maintaining. So they are able to do it with contractors. She claims she experienced nightmares, panic attacks and suffered an inability to be in crowded areas as a result of the violent content she viewed while working for the company. Now, one more thing about these contractors, it's like if they fuck up, all they have to do is rebrand. Same people, same executives, same buildings. Oh, well, it's a new company now. That was an old company. You can't do that with your main brand. You can't do that with YouTube or Facebook itself, but you can do that with contractors, and that's what they do. Collab Collabera, Collabera, I haven't heard that name. Maybe they've been around from the beginning. I doubt it. Because I've heard other stories like this that I've covered over the years with different names, with different firms, and different policies. YouTube's wellness coaches weren't available for people who worked evening shifts and were not licensed to provide professional medical guidance. It all, the suit also alleges moderators had to pay for their own medical treatment when they sought professional help. Neither YouTube nor Calabera responded to requests for comment. So, you know, the uh, skipping ahead, the company expects each moderator to review 100 to 300 pieces of video content each day with an error rate of 2 to 
So the uh, the San Francisco-based Joseph Severi Law Firm, which is representing the plaintiff, filed a similar lawsuit against Facebook that resulted in a $5.2 million settlement in May. Now, for Facebook, this multi-billion dollar behemoth, a $52, excuse me, $52 million settlement, and $52 million sounds like a lot. To them, a small price of doing business for the benefit that they get from this. The lawsuit shows YouTube may need to provide more resources for the people who need to remove videos that violate the rules. YouTube has reportedly reverted back to relying on humans to find and delete content after it used computers to automatically sift through videos during the coronavirus pandemic. Maybe it's still doing that. Maybe that's maybe that's how we got pinged last week. We got an appeal, right, Jim? We got we, when we got censored last week. They denied the appeal, right? Did they say anything about denying the appeal? Jim? Sorry. Uh, it just said uh, appeal rejected. Those are the only two words. I couldn't click on it. It wasn't a link. There was no explanation. It just said appeal rejected on this date. So it could be that's still uh, part of the automated system that was in place during coronavirus. It's funny how to hear, to hear some people talk about it like, like it's over now. Right. Uh, but, right. So um, it switched back to human content moderators because computers were censoring too many videos that didn't violate rules. Oh, that's so right. maybe that's, that's exactly maybe what that's happened. What we got caught up, caught up in here last week. Now they're going to human content moderation. But what were the algorithms trained to do in censoring content about coronavirus? Anything that mentions false positives, right? And who knows, whoops, we coded it wrong. Now you're guilty of impersonation. And uh, you know that, that's what we got pinged for last week. But here's the bottom line, because if you're listening to this story and going, Adam, you're right, this doesn't make sense. There's such an easier way to do this by having the viewers set up their own screens. They don't have to send it to any central processing system at all. I mean, I guess there could be a review of, of a review of a review, but it wouldn't be hard even to avoid that with an algorithm that says, look, if I post content and it's not violent and my friend flagged it or somebody flagged it because they're, they're, they don't like my politics, well, then eventually... You can write the program to figure that out. If, if I start flagging tons of videos for being violent, and then there's a way that other viewers can overturn them where they get asked at the end of the video, should this video have been flagged as violent? You say, no, well, hey, now I'm not a credible flagger. I just lost my flagging privileges on Facebook or YouTube. Ah, you see, this would be, it's not that complicated. Right. And you could have a system of, of, um, screening, not censorship, that would achieve the exact same effect without sending all of the vile content to people who you have to victimize and traumatize. And now my heart goes out to them as victims in this. But they're not the biggest victims in this story. I mean, if you sign up to look at the worst of the internet, to sift out the part that's not the worst of the internet, well, I hope that I, I hope at least they paid you honestly, right? If they're not providing medical care and they didn't say they were going to, hey, yeah, kind of that's on you. It sucks that you're traumatized. And I don't think the job should have existed in the first place. And I don't think you should have taken in the first place. I don't want that job. You couldn't. I don't think you could pay me enough. I don't I don't want to, to let that into my into my brain all of that evil concentrated in one brain day after day after day totally unnecessary but why do they do this because they slip in their misinformation well if it's misinformation we have to censor that too now what would be misinformation by youtube and facebook standards anything that challenges their corporate oligopoly power or challenges the state right jim Yep, yep. That logo right up there is what challenges their state and gets censored. Adam versus the man. So that's it. That's our show for today. I mean, we're going to do the good news and everything. But yeah, 
this, this, I, I hope this gives people, you know, a fresh insight into the censorship that we experience with Adam versus the man, you know, how fucked up the system is, uh, hopefully how we can change it by being better users of, of, of the internet. And, um, yeah, even, even studying that story and talking about it with Jim helped me understand it just, uh, a little bit better here.